We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Lindsborg, Kansas, as we get to visit with Mike Grosner, heading into his second season as the head coach of the Bethany Swedes. Coach, last year, 1-10 in 10 for the Swedes, your first season with the program. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. A week three win against Tabor, but other than that, it, you know, it, it, it looked like there were growing pains. You had a young squad, too. Yeah, Joey, hey, great to be back with you again. Um, you know, coming off last year when we did this interview, we we I had no clue what was uh, coming up, but we tried to put it together and talk about the, the team we had and the guys. You know, we were uh, 90 something bodies going into the season. We finished with 76 bodies. Uh, this signing class, I'll just allude to it quickly and probably talk about it later, but we, we've signed 78 as of this morning. So <laughs> a whole new football team with some guys coming back that uh, played a lot for us, you know, and, and they were young, uh, got great experience. Uh, we went into the season. Avila was a very good football team, defending champs, had a quarterback that had transferred in from a power five, uh, was the player of the year, and, and he showed it that night. We jumped on him early. Uh, I was excited for his home game, and we got up 17-6, to six, and then they came back at us right before half, 18-17 at halftime, and then we, we wore down in the second half, and he went and made some big-time plays like he's capable, and we felt good coming out of the game. You never want to lose, but, but for the first shot at it, uh, we felt pretty good that our kids competed well. And then we went over to KW, which is our rival forever, and uh, very good football team, nationally ranked, had just come off a loss to Evangel, who ended up going undefeated. Mm -hmm. And we we were in it to the end, nine minutes left, down 10-3, to three, driving on their five-yard line. We don't convert. I decide to go for a field goal. We miss it. Uh, and all of a sudden, bam, 75 yards later, their quarterback takes a counter and uh, things fell apart. So, you know, and then week three, we got a very good Tabor football team coming here and, and, uh, we still hadn't found many answers. We knew we were competing hard and we put it all together, uh, for four quarters and, uh, beat them 28, 17, had to throw the heck out of the ball. Um, but we found a way to win. What a, what a celebration. It felt like the, uh, national championship type celebrations I've been a part of. And, uh, and it was good for the kids. That was two and a half years of losing. Uh, it broke an 0 25 streak, I believe it was. So, you know, we went out the next week and probably, you know, got patted on the back too much all week. We went over to Sterling. Uh, terrible, terrible conditions. They have a grass field, one of the few you still play on. And, uh, it was pure mud, um, and it, you know I'm not going to make excuses, but it, but you know our team did not respond well. We were tied with five minutes left. Uh, we dropped back to pass on about our 10 yard line, trying to win it, and the ball got tipped in the air by a D lineman. Uh, came down in his hands. He uh, pitched it to another D lineman, and they scored. As our quarterback was tackling the original kid, so. We lost by a touchdown that day, and it was a tough day. I, My former coach, I didn't know it, but found out right after the game he passed away that day, uh, my offensive coordinator, Gary Sambo. Uh, so it was a tough day. His son was coaching my son at the at Salina Central. So it was it put it in perspective, but that was a tough uh, swallow for the Swedes all day. Um, and then the rest of the year, you know, we battled. Uh, I told our football team we were nine and two if you only played two quarters. Um, <laughs> you know, we just, there were spurts, even three quarters, we'd play real hard. Uh, and it might be in the first quarter. The St. Mary's game got out of hand early, and then we settled in and played well enough, but uh, we let them get a 30 point lead. Um, and then there were times in the fourth quarter against the Bethels, the Southwesterns. Uh, they just they just found a way to wear us down in the end with some young guys. So, you know, we weren't quite ready for friends. They're a real physical football team, run the option, 
flex pump type stuff. And uh, by the end of the year, when we faced them, we were depleted, uh, but we're not physical enough up front on the D line to, to handle that. So all in all, you know, one in tens, one in 10, uh, but we, we could take a lot of good out of it. And I really feel good about the guys coming back and I feel good about this incoming class. Uh, and our program is heading it, headed in the direction I envisioned a year ago. I, th I think you said it best with that recruiting class. I mean, you've recruited an entirely new football team. My goodness, yeah. that's going to be a lot of kids on campus. I, I want to ask one other thing, too. When we, when we spoke last year, we, we talked a lot about your time in the U.K., and I, I enjoyed the stories. Uh, after having been back for a year, how, how are things settled in? What's yeah. it like to, to be back and be coaching football in – Right there in the – well, I, I was going to say the heart of America, but I know you came from that conference. Yeah. Right, right in the middle of America. How about that? Yeah, you know, and this is my alma mater. So that throws some extra special uh, pride in this project. I called it last year, and I, and I think we're uh, really going, like I said, in the right direction. It, it, it took me some time to get my feet landed. As soon as I got on ground in November, I started recruiting. Uh, had to, you know, learn about our staff, had to put together a staff, uh, had to run a spring football, um, find out what these guys were all about that we inherited. And uh, they had to get to know me, you know, and, and we had to come together and uh, cohesively as a staff and uh, understand what, what tasks we had to take on uh, to get where we wanted to be. Now, you want to do it quickly. And uh, at times it looked like we were we were close and, and we were getting there. But I knew, you know, we were we were still uh, hiding some deficiencies. Um, so the, the biggest thing, you know, was me to get back grounded, recruiting the old ties that I had in the Midwest, Phoenix, Florida. Um, we've really opened some doors in the Dallas area. Uh, I've got two guys on staff or I had two that were from that area. So they did a great job. Um, so I feel like we've reestablished our feet uh, in the recruiting area. I've got two Kansas guys, my DC and uh, my tight end running back coach, both played for me at Baker, uh, Lawrence High and uh, Mill Valley guys. So we've really started hitting that area pretty hard, even though there's a lot of heart of America teams in there and you name it, the Northwest Missouri, the Emporia States, the Washburns. The good thing is we're starting to, to either win or lose against those schools. Um, so, so we've, we've made an imprint. We've also made a big imprint locally. Uh, my guys all summer went around and visited schools, um, last summer, this summer, and, and really established relationships uh, and who we are and what we're about at Bethany College. That, that to me, was important. And uh, they, they talked to the kids. Uh, they they uh, watched them work out. You know, they went to camps. Um, and it's really starting to show, you know, once you sign one kid from a really good high school or a good program, uh, and he's a good player, all of a sudden that opens the eyes to some teammates. Mm -hmm. And I've really felt in this recruiting class, we had to get back into this area, Kansas. Uh, when I got here, we only had a couple Kansas kids on the on the roster, which was crazy. And uh, so we, we went after some good kids. We've got three of the top players from Hutch High School, great, great powerhouse in this area. We got three kids from Clay Center, had a great year. Uh, we had uh, three kids transfer back that were Smoky Valley kids right here in the city. One's going to start for us. Uh, he'll be our starting tight end, most likely. The other two have to redshirt because it was within the conference. We had five kids transfer from within our conference to us, uh, which tells you something. Yeah, um, it tells you they're willing. They see something happening here, and they're and they're willing to sit a year because the transfer rule within our conference, and be a part of something special hopefully soon. So, uh, but I thought that the biggest thing was get back into the recruiting picture, and I'm telling you, Joey, <laughs> it is hard 
Uh, they might like me. They might like our coaches. Uh, they might like the city of Lindsberg when they visit, but, but one in 10 is one in 10. Yeah. And uh, one in 34 is one in 34. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it took a lot. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of uh, phone calls, trust, communication, you name it, to put together this class. And the class we put together last year, you know, we brought in 52 in that original class, uh, 28 or left. So, and you know, in, in a first year situation, uh, we're going to push them and they're either going to have both feet in if they got one feet out, you know, go find a new air, new place. That that's always been my philosophy. And, um, I feel really good where, where, where our culture is, uh, weight room culture, uh, work ethic. Uh, for instance, we had eight kids stay last year over the summer. We had, uh, over 30 at every workout this summer. Uh, and, and they were three grad students that are going to play for us. Uh, they were seniors and juniors, and they were incoming freshmen, which it was a great mix for those incoming freshmen to, to get a taste of it and get to know their uh, senior leaders. Uh, it was really cool to watch. Coach, I, I appreciate the, the word you used in that, two relationships. It really is about relationships, and I, I don't think that can be – overstated uh, as to how important that is. We're here on Midwest Sports Net visiting with Mike Rosner, the head football coach for the Bethany Swedes. And we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond right here. So I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel and, and continue to follow along. Coach, let's preview this season now. And I think a recurring theme, look through the numbers from last year, freshman, 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 leading the way for you in so many categories. On the offensive side of the ball, Landry Shields, a freshman, one of three quarterbacks that saw some time for you last year. He's coming back. Samarian Spencer, a freshman running back, led the way. He's coming back as well. Tell us a little bit about your offense. Yeah, I, I feel really good right now with what, you know, with the mix of the new guys and the old guys. Um, we had to make improvements up front in the O-line. Uh, we had three all-conference type kids, um, and then we, we had some deficiencies up front and not a lot of depth. So that was one area in this recruiting class that we said, okay, we're going we're gonna to make some improvements and we're going to push the guys that have played. Um, we signed Justin Clatterbuck. Uh, coach Clatterbuck uh, coaches, is an assistant coach on the offensive line for me. Justin was Brock Purdy's center. Uh, in high school, that's how far we'll take it back. But uh, and then Justin went and had a, a Eastern Oregon uh, experience. Then he transferred to Kansas Wesleyan. That's how I I knew Chance was in the area. I knew I, we had Arizona ties, but uh, they followed him here. So Coach was teaching at Salina South, and Coach No Line is kids at KW and then um, graduated, but still had two years left. So he asked me, you know, where he, where I thought he should maybe try. And I told him William Penn uh, was a good school. You know, he's a fullback type kid. He was a center in high school, but he had trimmed down and they had made him a skill guy. Uh, so he went and played at William Penn. But then uh, when we found out he, he had one year of eligibility left and we could get him with a grad program, we're starting an MBA here. And uh, he's very interested in it. He transferred back here in the spring. I told him, you're not playing fullback. You're going to be an old lineman. I need, a, I need a center or a guard. So he put on 45 pounds. He looks great. He's been here all summer, uh, stronger than Ox. The kid's going to be an all-conference football player, but he's going to line up at left guard for us. Uh, we're going to move our left starting left guard who was with us three years. He's a grad student as well, doing the NBA 4.0 student. Uh, he's going to play center. And then we have our returning starting center that's going to battle at center and guard. So we've added some instant competition and depth. And then, you know, we got Logan Kirby, at left tackle, uh, two-year starter, all-conference type kid. Ruben Albaneris, at right guard, who was our second team all-conference uh guard very good football player out of texas and then we got big lenny boykin uh 300 plus six four kid that can really move out of florida uh coming back as a junior at right tackle and we're still 
you know, semi-young, were all juniors or grad students up front. So uh, that's a, I, I really feel that's a strength, uh, which was a, a semi. When I say weakness, we just we 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 passed pro really well last year, uh, but our run blocking as a cohesive group uh, wasn't super. Um, you know, we had young quarterbacks. You got Landry Shields, a true freshman, playing out there. You know, at times he looked great. At times he was making some big-time mistakes that he, he he found out you can't do at the college level. You can't throw that ball late right down the middle. You can't ask a guy to go make a play every time. You just got to be smart with the football. And he's, he's shown this spring that uh, he's making great strides. And he was up here this summer working out with us that – the cool thing was Dalton Whitworth was another quarterback out of Manhattan, a freshman that played for us from Rock Creek, who put up huge numbers as a senior and very smart kid. Well, they've really connected. And in, in this summer, Landry stayed in Manhattan and lived with Dalton and got a job. And uh, they'd drive up and, and make our workouts and, and uh, throwing sessions. So I think both those guys, the connection between both of them is great. We need that. You know, you need that from your starter and a backup. Um, and just the leadership is starting to come out from both those guys. They're still very young. Uh, but I feel like that we're not going to put as much pressure on them to make huge plays for us and third down and long plays and different things. I think we'll be able to run the ball better for sure. And that'll help our passing game. Um, Michael Young. Wide out on the outside, fantastic. I think we've got a shell of him last year, and a shell of him had 500 yards in the first four games uh, before he went down with a quad injury, which really hampered him the rest of the, the year. I knew he was fast, um, you know, when, when I saw him running, and a couple of times he pulled away on some big plays early in the season, but uh, he he can really go. He'll be a pro prospect. Uh, he's a 10-300 guy uh, out of high school, you know, and he dealt with some injuries, and he's in the best shape of his life. He sent me some videos this summer of him working out on a treadmill, and uh, he was flying. So I'm excited for him to finally be healthy and prepared for a season. He'll only be a sophomore. Zamarian Spencer, you know, like we said, well, he had preseason all-conference type honors. And, and the reason I put him up for that is I think he's a special athlete and he's 215 pounds. Uh, he can run. He was a quarterback in high school. So he had never carried the ball as a tailback. He was uh, kind of a wildcat, you know, run first, throw second type kid. But um, he got, you know, he had to get used to the pounding of college football and the everyday carry. And then waking up on Sunday and being sore as heck, and how do I get to the next Saturday? Uh, so I think that, you know, as the season wore on, that got on him a little bit. But uh, we had a young man step up that had been here before, Josiah Hardrick. He's an Oklahoma kid, more kid. And uh, I'll tell you what, I really like him. Um, he stepped in there when Zamarian couldn't go at times. Uh, this spring, he really had a great spring. He does all three things. He passed pros, he catches the ball in the backfield, and he runs the ball, and he'll block you. Uh, so I, I see those guys in the backfield together quite a bit because Josiah is kind of a hybrid fullback, tailback kid. Um, so I'm excited for, for our tailback position. Sounds like the offense is, is really coming along there too. I appreciate you leading with the offensive line too. We like to – uh, right, right here on Midwest Sports Net, we always like promoting that line. It seems like they don't get a lot of attention yeah. during the season. So if we can at least talk about them during the previews, then give them give them the the honor that they deserve. So that's where you, Joey. That's where you win or lose. Yeah. O line, D line. I learned that at Baker um, early on. We had some firepower, and we could score. Uh, but when we made our biggest stride and our and our push towards a national championship uh, game. It was up front and it, it, both sides. Uh, I felt like go line at Baker. We, you know, we, we got that pretty set early, but then we had to go on the other side and really recruit some D line. And, uh, and we found that out with experience. Uh, you get in the playoffs. That's, that's where it is. You see it each round you go, 
you see better and better O line D line. That's uh, I think that's been the history of football. Um, and until you experience it uh, at an elite level, um, it's it's nice because I can home hammer at home here. You know, when we're recruiting, I, if it's an O lineman, I, I can't wait to meet him. If it's a D lineman, a big D in, those guys are hard to find uh, because they get snatched up. A tight end, believe it or not, the dinosaur tight end is hard to find uh, because a lot of people make those guys tackles, you know, put some weight on them, make them offensive tackles. So uh, the old fullback's hard to find these days, you know, that can do it all. And I think we've got one. Um, but, but, you know, football is cyclical. It, it, you know, you can do all this, that, that, and the other, and all the new stuff. It comes back to up front. And if you're good up front, you got a chance to win. Well, I'd like to hear about your defensive line then a little bit. I know that uh, you, you've got some players that, that are coming back and, and you've got some adjustments to make there too. Of the defense, and again, freshmen, uh, there, there are so many freshmen that were on that list. Terry McCutcheon led the team in tackles last season, linebacker position. But tell us a little bit about the defense. Yeah, I, I like our defense. I think we took a couple hits inside. Um, Sterling Mack was just a rock-solid kid. Uh, has He graduated, but I talked him into doing a grad year. And, and uh, so about three weeks ago, I had it all set up. He was going to get some – his teacher certification and we were going to maybe get two years. Uh, but he decided to take a job, you know, which good for him. Yeah. Uh, we gave him some choices and, and he, you know, his biggest thing was to walk uh, on that stage in May or April in our case. And, and he did. Uh, and I said, you gotta be all in if we're going to do this and you can't be half in. And so he, he went out in the real world. So that's going to be a setback, 310 pound nose guard that you couldn't move. Mm -hmm. uh, David Sweetman uh, is going to red shirt this year. And then he'll be back by gang busters the following year. But there's another D tackle that played a lot for us as a freshman. Um, so we went after it. We uh, out of uh, in our recruiting, uh, we, we were looking after DNs, uh, really trying to get some fast kids off the edge. And lo and behold, we found some inside guys. I got a freshman coming in, Humphrey Kakuba. Uh, he's out of North Dallas area and uh, that Denton area. And I went in there and it, it was it was one of those, my kid was playing in an all-star game in Dallas at the stadium. So I'm there for three days watching all those kids. We signed four kids off, the, uh, off my kid squad. Uh, one from Louisiana, my own kid out of Girard, Kansas. And then I, so I had some time on my hands. So I went over to uh, Denton area and uh, did some school visits and I pop into Humphrey school and his coach started talking. We started talking and lo and behold, his, uh, his dad had coached at Dar Dar Darby high school in Wichita forever. Uh, Coach Young, and this was his son, and he had been at this uh, Denton school for 12, 12 seasons. And he told me about this Humphrey kid, and he said, uh, this is all I need to see. He says, uh, most, he wrote me an email and said, most disruptive D lineman I've had in 12 years. <laughs> and I said, I got to talk to him. And we met. He's a great kid, uh, engineering uh, you know, and we have a pre-engineering program, so I'm trying to sell the heck out of that. Um, and they had two kids that wanted engineering, so it was it was uh, quite a sell. But uh, he ended up visiting and loved it, and signed with us. And I think he's going to make a instant impact somewhere. He can play inside and outside. He's about six three, six four, about two fifty. Uh, right now, but he could be one of those 280 giants in a year, um, or we'll have to use him on the edge. But I feel really good about our edge players. We signed a recent signee, Jackson Cobbs. Uh, those of you that are Arkansas fans, his dad was Cedric Cobbs, the great running back at Arkansas that rushed for about 3,500 yards in his career and then signed with the Patriots um, in the fourth round and played a few years in the NFL. Jackson's unbelievable uh, athlete, 
and uh, he can play linebacker. We're going to we're going to use him off the edge. And then uh, he can also carry the ball. I pulled up a, a couple highlights of him running the ball. And I told him if, if, you know, if we get in trouble with injury or something later, you know, you could be toting a rock again. So, uh, but I think he's going to be an edge guy with Calvin Jeans. Calvin's returning a uh, big old 250 pound DN, has played linebacker. So I feel like, you know, when you put together a D line, you, you need the pass rush. Uh, and we play a lot of man. Um, so we got to get to the quarterback somehow. And at times that's where we struggled. And I feel like uh, we, we've, we've recruited that position to pass rush and, and they're stout against the run. We've got a bunch of wrestler types that we've recruited. They're about 230, 240, similar to Sweetman um, that can really move, that can go inside and outside. I think, we might be a little smaller up front. Uh, Brian Adams is another 270-pound nose guard that's returning that that could help, uh, needs to help us inside. Brand, Brandon Pratt, Braden Pratt, excuse me, uh, another tough, sawed-off nose guard type needs to help us. Uh, Martavius, a uh, kid that played for us uh, in spurts last year, is about a 320-pound nose guard that, you know, if we can get a couple plays here and there out of him and then get him some rest till he gets in shape. Uh, he did come back late summer, so I was proud of him uh, to do a little bit of running with us. So we've got pieces, Joey. I just uh, – they got to they gotta step up. You know, when you lose two inside guys, uh, as a coach, you're worried. But I think athletically we're way more athletic than we were. And then you mentioned, you know, TJ, Terry McCutcheon, Heck of a freshman year. Uh, he started on the inside for us, and then we had a need at DN, and he became our pass rush guy. He was the guy that uh, really got out to the quarterback and, and made huge plays. He was voted newcomer of the year by his teammates, um, which is quite an honor because we're, we were all newcomers. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> any one of those freshmen, you know, could have – Received that honor, but but TJ's a leader for us, and uh, I like our linebacking core. We got a uh, grad student Kyrie Marshall, heck of a player, uh, TJ, and then <clears throat> we have Julian Carpenter, who's a three-year starter from Phoenix. That'll be a senior. Uh, that's our linebacking crew. Americo Mabry is a kid we played off the edge as a freshman. He's moved to the linebacker position, tougher than heck. Um, so I feel really good inside and outside. Uh, secondary, you know, we've got a corner, Zamada Wilson, a lot of experience, really good football player at one side. And then we've got another kid named E.T. Uh, that we moved over from receiver that's a long 6'1 track guy that's going to play corner for us. Uh, and then after that, it's going to be freshmen, you know, and, and we, we signed some pretty good ones, but who can step up and provide depth? Um we have a safety situation that I think could be really good. It, it depends if Connor Paimo, our leading tackler, our leading defender, if he decides to keep playing football, we're going to put him at free safety. If not, uh, Jax Hinaha, uh, the Hutch High kid, I, I think pound for pound was one of the best players in the state of Kansas last year. And uh, we've had him here all summer. He's put on 30 pounds. He's 165. He played at 135 pounds <laughs> and had six picks and you name it. was all over the field. All state, first team all state kid. Uh, but I think when it's said and done, he's going to be a six foot plus 185 pound safety that everybody remembered, you know, from high school. What the heck happened? His brother, I, when I recruited, I, I, I asked how big his brother was, and he grew late, and he was uh, became a 6'1 young man. So Jax has got that potential. Um, Jensen, Camden Jensen from Hutch has got a chance to push to play at center for us. I'm hoping uh, that he is our starter or backup behind Juan uh, Guerra. And uh, the thing with Jensen, he's ready to play. He's 290 pounds. Uh, but he's never shotgunned. 
you know, and that's a big if. <laughs> you know, he, he grew up in the, the run-oriented offense that Hutch had. And uh, so we've been working on that this summer, and hopefully he's ready to help us. Uh, so overall, you know, I, I think we're going to be competitive. It's just can we play four quarters and, and become a team pretty quick. I don't, I don't think you're going to sneak up on anybody. I don't, just, <laughs> no, like, it's going to be well. <laughs> I, 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 maybe last year, but I just don't. I don't. I think if people are watching and and what's happening there, I don't. I don't know if you're going to be able to sneak up on anybody. Anyway, uh, I I would uh, really. I'll, I'll ask about special teams because I know you used three kickers last year. All three of them were freshmen. Kind of a revolving situation there. How's that uh, shaping out right now? Uh, it's revolving. <laughs> all, all three are now gone um in, in a good way one one decided to go the army route and, and take a shot um and then the other two were used out of necessity they were position players um that we used as kickers uh our punters back zeke mumford great great year for him he's if you've ever watched him he's unique He's an Australian kid, and he can get it off in a split second. Um, athletic, he's our number one tennis player. Um, but Zeke, Zeke really had a fun, good year. We, we did some fakes with him. Uh, love his personality. So he's back for his senior campaign. So I feel good as, at the punter position. And then we signed a kid named Leighton Witte out of Canton Galva here locally eight man football, but what intrigued me about him is he could kick. Uh, but at the eight man level, they do not kick extra points at all or field goals. So he did the kickoff and I saw those kicks on tape and I like what I saw. Plus he's a great athlete. He's going to be one of our fastest players at whiteout. So we signed him, but it back, back then I put in his ear, Hey man, you gotta, you gotta keep kicking. You got to be, you never know in our situation, you got to be ready for us. And uh, lo and behold, we went to the eight man all star game and he was their kicker. Had a nice night kicking off, but he's never attempted a field goal or extra point in a real game. So we've done a little of that this summer. Uh, kids like him, they've watched him out there doing it. Um, but I've been tirelessly trying to find one. And uh, I'm telling you, I offered our best scholarships to long snappers and kickers trying to solidify that position. Uh, as we speak, I'm waiting for a phone call from a young man out of Arkansas that there was a 7A uh, all-star kicker. Uh, and I got on him because his head coach played for me at Baker. Mm -hmm. And he called me out of blue about a month ago and said, hey, I got a kid, great kid, big leg, you know, and he coached special teams with me, so he knows. And he said when he hits it, it just thumps. He, he was a soccer kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's just learning, you know, all phases of kicking, but he's really come on. So uh, I feel good. I feel like he's going to commit. We've had some good exchanges. Uh, and he can punt a little bit, so that gives us a backup punter as well. Um, so, you know, if – I think we're going to be good on special teams because, you know, we got some athletes that can run down and do some things, but if, unless you can snap it and hold it and kick it, uh, things yeah. can go awry quickly. Last year, Joey, I've never done it, but in my career, I went for it a ton on fourth down, uh, red zone stuff. We, we didn't ask our guys to line up and we lost our, our starting kicker in the opening game. He, he, uh, he was a Shawnee, uh, mission kid and he made his first field goal 42 yarder and never had missed in high school um, and so we're feeling good like I think the stadium was shocked that we kicked a field goal <laughs> and uh, lo and behold two kids we scored again and uh, on a kickoff he tried to make a tackle and blew his ACL and so he was gone for the year that's why the carousel started in that position for the rest of the year. And uh, he has opted not to continue his career just because it was his, it was his kicking leg and yeah. uh, he just felt like he couldn't come back on it. So that's where we are. Um, if you ask me today, I don't feel great. Uh, maybe at the end of the week, I'm going to feel a heck of a lot better. 
<laughs> I want to keep up with that, Coach. I do want yeah. to ask you a little bit later and see see how that turns yeah. out. Season gets underway in September. Uh, a lot of August games on the schedule. You all play first Saturday, September 7th. August 31st. Or do you get an August 31st? Yeah, yeah we got Saturday one, yeah. Okay. Well, I have as uh, Av- at Avila. Yeah. Yeah, forgive me. I'm sorry. At no. Avila on August 31st, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I typed that down wrong. Uh, then the next weekend, you have K-Dub at yep. home. So reversing the schedule there. A bye week uh, later on in the season after that bye week is right. when the messenger division starts. And that was a tough division at last so, week as well. So tell us a little I bit think, about the schedule. Uh, she's, I see Coach once a week, Coach Kessinger, and I, I thanked him. I said, well, they stacked your side. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, it it turned out to be a, a gauntlet. Um and it's going to be again, you know, you got McPherson, you got Southwestern, you got Bethel, you got Evangel, you got Friends. I mean, you name it. Uh, it it's a, every week it is a tough, tough ball game. So um, it is what it is. Hopefully by then we've established ourselves, we've stayed healthy, and then we'll jump into it. We have, like you said, we go to Evangel to open it. Last year, we played them really well. Uh, It was our homecoming. Uh, I had a lot of old teammates back. I was, I was, you know, okay, what are we going to be like? And, and we went toe to toe. We just couldn't score enough points. Uh, But I thought defensively, we played really well. Um, So, you know, we're at that stage. Yeah. Are we, are we there? No. Um, Are we getting there for sure? You know, and I, I think it's going to be mentally, you know, overcoming that obstacle of winning consistently, you know, and how do you act and how do you prepare after a win? Mm-hmm. Um, and then physically, are we, you know, we're still going to be young. Uh, we're going to have to play a lot of young guys again. And can they physically get through an 11 game season and then hopefully the playoffs? Um, so I, yeah, I, Joe, I feel good, um, where we're at and then we'll see how things play out. Well, I, I enjoyed following you all last year and I look forward to following you all again. Midwest sports net's going to follow the Swedes under Mike Groster in his second season at the helm there. Coach, I enjoy the visits. I appreciate your stories and, and I know so much more about your team now than I did just uh, a little while ago. So I'm, I'm grateful to learn about it. Should be a fun season again. Got the, the losing streak that's in the rearview mirror now. So at least the, the double digits one, I know now there's another one to, to take care of. And, uh, I look forward to seeing how this plays out in 2024. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today on our Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. 